With me in the studio tonight is uh, Chetan Morada, who is very good friend of Neeraj Grover. Thank you, Chetan. Good evening, Arnav. Thank you for coming. It's an honor uh, to be with you over here. Thank you very much. Uh, Meenal is uh, the editor-in-chief of the Mumbai Mirror, but more importantly than that, uh, Meenal is penning an entire work that is based around this incident. Meenal, thank you for coming. We also have with us uh, Dr. Anjali Chabria, well-known psychiatrist tonight. Uh, we have senior lawyer from Delhi, Sumit Varma, and we'll be joined by another lawyer in our studios in Mumbai. I uh, want to first ask you, Chetan, as, as a close friend of Neeraj Grover, are you surprised at the kind of national attention this entire story is getting, at the kind of reactions that are coming, not just from Mumbai, but everywhere, following no. the judgment? Actually, I'm not surprised at all because I think it's a very heinous crime. And uh, the extent to, to which these people went <coughs> after committing the crime was, I mean, it was totally brutal. It's completely brutal and I guess the kind of attention with the media and everything, I guess even the media is even responsible for what has happened so far in terms of taking this case forward. To getting it to a place where people are actually realizing what Maria and what Jerome did is actually completely wrong. You, the, think, you think she was just, uh, you know, the way, the way the, it's being pictured, at least the way the court has uh, dealt with this is that she just was this, you know, unsuspecting person caught in the wrong place at the wrong time between two men, uh, you know, she was assaulted, she just did everything out of a sense of fear. Do you buy this theory, no, I Chetan? I'm surprised the court seems to have bought it. I don't think I'll buy this theory at all. I mean, I remember the time when uh, Neeraj went missing. He was missing for 14 days before we found his body and the body was found because of Maria. Maria was the one who led them to the body. The point is, what was the fear when you were sitting in a police station right next to Jerome? She was sitting right next to Jerome in the police station with us. And what is the fear in your mind that you can't just tell the cops that this is the man who's actually killed this, who's killed Neeraj? So what is the fear out there? I mean, the law is in front of you, the cops are in front of you. So what is the fear about? What is she fearing? Is she fearing that Jerome is going to probably get out and get after her? I mean, that's as good as committing the crime itself. She's not just a co accomplice, she's a co-murderer, you'd say. I would say she's a co-murderer. Okay. Uh, Minal, the law has been applied technically here. Do you feel it has been applied too technically, Minal? And what do you think about this lady Maria Susai Raja's role in the whole brutal murder and killing of uh, Neeraj Grover? Well, uh, Arnav, I think if we are to, um, if we are to respect the law of the land, then I, I would imagine that we have to respect the judgment. And of course, uh, the prosecution has already said that they will be appealing in the High Court. Uh, whether it's technical or whether the judge has uh, gone only by the, the letter of the law and not necessarily the spirit is a matter for debate. Uh, as far as uh, I'm personally concerned, yes, I think that she did have a chance uh, during that whole unfortunate episode when she could have raised the red flag when when she left the house to go to Hyper City and uh, you know to buy to buy the chopper etc when she could have there's a pol there's a police station which is right on the way and where she could have have raised alarm sought help and she chose not to do that um, as far as as how she is as a person um, well, she, she. I think the the image that we have of her is really one one dimensional, and I think there is a little more to her. I hold no brief for her, but I think uh, she's being painted as a villainous, um, um, very radically. You'd like to you 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 you'd like to respond to that, Chetan? Well, she has a point of view. I mean, that's her point of view. Like I said, and uh, me being Nira's friend, and I mean I'll. I wouldn't say that I have a neutral view exactly, but more or less it is a neutral view in a way and also. Um, what do I say? Uh, let me ask I mean, you, I mean, I'll just one, one further question from the, did she not, did she not get the, you know, the, the knives and, and, and the chopping blocks which actually helped cut up the body? Absolutely. In, in, into hundreds I mean, of pieces? I, I, you know, absolutely nobody. I think there is no doubt whatsoever on her culpability. And as I just said, that she did have uh, ample opportunity to raise the red flag, and she didn't do that. There, she had more than one occasion where she could have raised an alarm. I mean, there is no doubt about that. So she was then, in that sense, she was then an equal party to the murder and the gruesome disposal of the 
of the corpse of Neeraj Grover. For which she has been, uh, uh, the court has held her guilty. For which she gets the minimum sentence of three years, which means she's going to walk out tomorrow. Three. I think the, the total punishment for that is three, for destruction of evidence is three years. Are we looking at this too technically? Let me get in before I go across uh, to, to Sumit Varma. Anjali Chabria, well-known psychiatrist, tell me, what does this tell you about the personality of, uh, of Maria Susay Raj? And in your view, can someone only be intimidated into committing the kind of crime that she did? See, it's very difficult to comment on her personality, but I think what it looks like from whatever information we have at the moment is that definitely she was there. She wanted to escape. She wanted to escape. And she just did what she wanted to do for herself at that time. Because if she really wanted to get out of the, you know, if she was just an unsuspecting observer, yes, she could have used any of these opportunities, you know, gone to the cops, gone and confided in somebody, you know, just run away from there. No, but she didn't. Nothing else. She didn't run away from there. That's, that's yes, my point. Yes. She did not run away yes, from there. Yes. Satish Manishinde, welcome. She right. not only should she not run away from there. Mr. Manishinde, she actually helped get the chopping blocks and the knives which were used to dispose the body. If she wanted to run away from there, and if she was really scared, she had an opportunity to escape and go to the police, if she was well, indeed uh, innocent. Satish. I have uh, seen some portions of the trial. Yes. And uh, it's shocking that such a judgment has been rendered. Uh, it, it is not the conduct of an innocent man or a person only involved in destruction of evidence. And uh, she was the last person seen with him. And uh, if you take up the last scene theory, I think there was more uh, culpable uh, evidence as far as she was concerned. So than, sorry, sir, uh, can I just come in for a moment? Yeah, right? sure. Then so it's the way the, you're very right, it's the way the evidence was destroyed also. No one yes, That's true. Uh, apart from all this, uh, one has to see yeah. that if at all she was a victim of Neeraj Grover or, you know, she was being subjected to uh, whatever... Uh, 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 treatment that uh, he is supposed to have been given, first of all, he would have not been found in her flat. And secondly, uh, uh, it, it appears to have been a long time uh, friendship. I don't know what kind of a relationship they had. But if at all she was a victim, the first thing that she would have done, even if we believe the process, even if we believe what the judge has said, that it was uh, her uh, boyfriend who killed him, uh, she would have gone gone to the police, reported to the nearest uh, servant, uh, public servant and uh, you know, Which she told didn't. them she didn't and uh, if at all she was innocent, you would not find those blood stains on her walls which were painted afresh and the way she conducted herself in uh, first of all getting the weapon of uh, chopping off the body, packing it up, concealing it, uh, taking it away along with her boyfriend and I think uh, the, knee, the case needs to be revisited and uh, I am sure the state will appeal and I have spoken to the public prosecutor on a number of occasions and uh, he uh, appears to be very upset with what the court has rendered, well, I must particularly, say, particularly when the entire chain of circumstances well, according to him was established. Well, if, if that is what he feels, I must say he was on news last night, he didn't put up too much of a defense. But let me go across to Sumit well, Varma. not for the prosecutor to put up a defense. No, sure, no, no. The prosecutor put up a defense of, of his own handling of this case, which is subject to criticism. Sumit Varma, what do you think? Has the law been applied to technically? Here is a lady who helps chop up a body into 300 pieces, participates in the act of murder, therefore in the disposal of the body, covers up, tries to destroy evidence, and is now tomorrow going to walk away free. Has the law been applied technically, Sumit? No, Ornov, you need to realize that uh, Maria has been granted the maximum prescribed sentence in law for the offense of causing disappearance and destruction of evidence. The uh, prosecution case which has been accepted by the trial court against her is only qua destruction of evidence, not qua participation in the main substantive offense of causing culpable homicide. Yeah. And therefore, uh, for 201, she's been granted the maximum prescribed sentence. She could not have been sentenced to more than three years. Like I said uh, earlier, yeah. even, if, even if she has been convicted for an offense of 201, to say the least, uh, I think uh, uh, the, the entire evidence needs to be relooked. Particularly, you know, when uh, the case of the prosecution was that uh, the walls of uh, Maria in her apartment yes. were... Uh, 
freshly painted and uh, the DNA evidence collected by the prosecution totally rendered that uh, there was more to it than only chopping the body. Therefore, Precisely. I think uh, no, my question the case, it, it cannot be stopped at the fact that she was uh, yeah, a uh, sentenced no, 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 for no, no, an no. offence under 201. Why?